we have to make sure we're you know fully equipped to to take on the you know the next team um, that comes to our stadium and, and like it's like I said before it'll only repeat myself uh, we make you know individually collectively as a group of people we have to make sure we we give a really strong account of ourselves when we walk out on that pitch what can you do as a manager in a week to try and change things to try and get the players in a position to to win a football match at this point You've got to really, you know, it's, it's it's everything, isn't it? It's emotional, it's it's technical, it's tactical, and and like you say, with um, I think if you could bottle, you know, confidence, you'd be very, very, very successful. And you know, for for very, you know, strong reasons, that the confidence levels have obviously been waning a little bit the last, you know, month or two. So it, it's my my job to lead, my job to push forward, my job to drive standards, to drive habits, um, you know, to make sure we don't have a week like we had last week, and uh, you know, certainly that. Uh, that speaks for itself. Do you think it's been a confidence and a quality issue, or do you feel like some players have let themselves down in the last couple of games? Uh, no, I'd never, never label it any individual. You know, I'm, I'm involved in it. I take full accountability of it. Um, you know, the one who's, who's at the forefront of it at the minute. So, I've no, no problem with that. You know, my job's to lead. My job's to give them confidence. My job's to make sure they know exactly what's expected on the, on the pitch, and, and to obviously to wipe out the individual errors that, you know, that costing us at the minute, so. Is there anything you can say to reassure fans at the moment, just to sort of, I, I know you've got to lift the players, but is there anything you can say to lift the supporters as well? Yeah, listen, it's their, it's their football club, isn't it? And, you know, right, it's all the want to support a team that, that really gives a, a strong, a strong work ethic, a strong, you know, application and attitude towards, you know, their job. The key words in the in the you know, it's in it's in the it's in the word in it, profession. You are a professional person, professional footballer, and you have to remain professional, um, regardless of what situation that you're in, and you have to represent yourself, um, you know, and the, and the football club to the best of your ability every single time. Um, you know, sometimes it might not be your day. Uh, but yeah, as, as fans and supporters of the football club, I I feel it, you know, I to feel exactly what what the feeling themselves, you know, it's, I don't need anybody, the chairman or anybody else to tell me about my own professional, um, you know, capacity. I've got my own professional pride that drives me and it always has done. You know, we're, we're, we've been in a situation since I've been in the building that we need, you know, to put our best foot forward and, you know, however that may look on, and it starts, you know, every time we come into work, every time we, you know, take the pitch, um, it starts on Saturday. You, know? you said you felt physically sick after the match game. Have you got the sense that there are other people in that dressing room who feel the same way? Yeah, I'd like to think so, yeah. Like I said, the professional, professional athletes, professional to the trade, professional to each other, um, to themselves, to the families who, who took them around the country when they were young young boys, you know, trying to make a career in the game. So regardless of the situation that we find ourselves in, it's it's very, very, very important that we, we stay focused, very important that we recognise our kind of say, you know, our profession and what it means to, to people, what it means to ourselves um, and, and certainly collectively, you know, as a group, that's the fans, that's the, the, the owner, the, the manager and the, into the players. We talked a little bit last week about finishing the season in the right way. Is that easier said than done to an extent when a team finds itself in the position that your team finds itself in now and how hard is it going to be to put a bit of frame back into the place between now and now? Yeah, it's, of course it is. You know, I won't sit here and I try and live in the truth, to be honest. And I think, you, you know, there's there's certain things I can say, there's certain things that I've obviously got to stay private and um, got to stay internal, which I'm sure, you know, fans appreciate that, although they, they would always want to, to know everything. Sometimes it's just not possible. Um, but from, you know, my point of view, rest assured, I turn up to work every single day. I know what it means to fans. I know what it means. I know how financially it means. I know what emotionally it means. Uh, and it's my job to drive these standards and make sure in the next coming months, the you know the next you know seasons that 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 approaches you know quite quickly that we are in a really good fit you know vein of the form within the football club and and certain processes have followed and and the certain departments that that are functioning you know a lot stronger than we are now. Absolutely understand. There's, there's certain things that a manager just can't talk about. In, in public, and you rather say fans will want to know everything, but you can't share everything. But have you had to deliver a few home truths without naming names, going into any specifics? Have you had to do that with 
players? Have you had to do that upstairs? Have you had to sort of have some very frank conversations that maybe you've not had to have before as a manager? Yeah, of course. Yeah, like I say, it's it's my job to lead. It's my job to to make sure there's you know the, there's a, there's an attachment and there's a there's a thoughtful process. I had a meeting with the chairman, and I don't mind sharing. I had a meeting with the chairman two or three weeks into the job. I told him exactly my thoughts of of the organisation, my thoughts of everything that's going on, what I see in my opinion of the football club, how it needs to be built and how it needs to go forward. Because um, I've done it, you know, a few times very successfully, um, and that was two three weeks into the job. Um, and the worst thing is, obviously, that it, it's become apparent exactly what what we spoke about, which I try and be open as honest as I can because I think people appreciate that and they can do something about it and be proactive. You know, as football clubs, I think the best thing to do is be proactive. Once you are a reactive football club, you make bad decisions on top of bad decisions, whether it's financially, whether it's, you know, outwardly or internally, um, because it's it's emotion-driven by results. And, you know, to be proactive, you'll know football clubs around the pyramid that are very, very, really well astutely run. And they're very proactive in what we do. And we need to get back to that, which they've been for many years under, obviously, the stewardship of, of the chairman. How important is honesty in all levels of football? Because I can well imagine there are some managers who wouldn't want to have those conversations, Liam, that would perhaps sort of understand things and would like to say things, but for whatever reason, keep it to themselves. No, it's it's an open, honest, frank conversation. The chairman's a person who wants honesty. He wants you to... He doesn't want surprises. He wants to exa- you know, know exactly what's going on at his football club and how he can build it and how he can maintain and sustain. Um, so I think it's, an, you know, it's a very, very comfortable conversation that I can have with him and then into, obviously, then the departments of the football club into the players. Um, you know, Like I said, I've, I've done it many times. I've been doing this job for, for a long time and um, you know, I'll be judged at the end of my tenure, I'm sure, however, however that may be at the minute. Not nowhere near good enough, nowhere near the standards and the levels that we want to be at. Uh, but come a period of time, I'm sure there will be. When the club typically starts, you almost get a head start on planning for next year versus some of the teams who don't know what vision they're going to be in. How is that progressing if you are able to get a head start? I Listen, you'd hope so. I think when departments have been functioning for five and six years, you'd hope there's already profiles and processes in place. Um, I'm not really interested in any other club at the minute. I think we are you know, our own organisation and we've got to be the best version of ourselves. You know, if we think we can get ahead of the curve because of the situation that we're in, I think, of course, we should do that. Um, you know, we'd be, you know, not telling the truth and not sitting here really kidding anybody if we if we didn't think that we were going to be in a certain place and, you know, in a certain time frame that we can be proactive. And I think we should, you know, make sure that we give the best account of ourselves and be as proactive as we can like you say, to get ahead of the curve, to be as strong as organisation as we can coming in the next couple of months and the next few years. Yeah, I suppose the juicy sort of line to put it is, is, have you got a list of, say, we need these X number of players, this is who I want, this is who is going to help us get to where we need to get to in the summer. Have you already done that? Is work ongoing to sort of get your ducks in a row? So when you get to a point when you can actually speak to clubs and do those kind of things, maybe Robin can... Can, uh, can be in a good position to, to act. Yeah, absolutely. And listen, you, you know, I've got many opinions. I've got many thoughts on not just the playing staff, the departments around the football club that we can function and we can and, and we can get to a really, really strong level. Um, and you know, obviously, then it's important then from managing up and the owner, etc., into into Paul um, and, and Karen that we that we're able to do that and we can able to then grow ourselves. You know, in the in the division. Uh, and sustain at a level that we want to sustain at, um, and like I say, represent ourselves like we have been, you know, for a, for a number of years. Thanks, Liam. Thanks, Rob. Thank you. Hey, Liam. You right, Paul? Yeah, good. Thank you. Yeah, good. Thank you. He talks about uh, having a meeting with Jim three weeks into the job and telling him exactly what, what, what was his reaction to that. Yeah, very, very open, very honest. Back, back to myself, which I think it's important to have that. Uh, relationship I'd hate to meet somebody years down the line and you know the and kind of thing why don't you tell me why don't you give me th- your thoughts and listen it, it doesn't mean that I'm right it doesn't mean that I'm wrong um, but I'm very open and very transparent in my thoughts and how I see environments cultures philosophies football clubs um, because I've had a really good strong track record with it so 
I think it's important that, that I relay that information and, and fingers crossed we can go forward and make them positive decisions. Yeah, the chairman's always liked to work closely with managers. Have you, have you found him supportive? Yes. Yeah, I've found him very open, very honest, very thoughtful, um, very good person. What well, He's got the best interest at heart, the football club, and he has done for, for the last 15, 16 years, whenever it is, I think everybody can see that. Um, and he's very aware that, you know, we need to we need to put our foot forward again. Um, sometimes within football, I think there's a like a clock face and you come round and it's your turn to press the reset button. I think it's it's Rotherham's turn to press the reset button and, and go again. Uh, whether people like that or not, whether I speak too frankly and honest or not, I'm, I'm not so sure, but that's my opinion. Axe, we'll start with the tough stuff. It's been a, a difficult week for Rotherham United. The two fixtures just gone by. How tough has it been in there as a player to take? Very tough, very tough, um, you know, to lose um, in the fashion I feel like we have in the last few games is, um, yeah, yeah, there's no hiding how um, how hurt, you know, the players are, you know, they run around the, around the building. Um, yeah, it's been tough, but, and, uh, but all we can really do now is, is look forward. That's the thing, isn't it, now, looking at those games, the only thing you can do is work out how to build on that, how to bounce back from that, I suppose. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, you know, because it's a feeling you don't you don't want to feel and you don't want the fans to feel as well. So, like I said, it's about us all kind of getting together, um, you know, and galvanising each other to, um, to, you know, show some pride on the on the next following games and, um, and get results, not really thinking about anything other than the game itself. Um, and getting the best out of it. It's the ultimate footballing cliche, isn't it, to say we'll take the next game as it comes and take each game at a time. But in this kind of instance, that's what you've got to do, isn't it, to just try and turn out a performance the next time you're on the pitch and try and get a result the next time you're on the pitch. Yeah, yeah. It's, um, at the end of the day, you know, it's a, it's it's the cruel and kind of, um, it's like a bit of a like, blessing and a curse, you know. It's like there's always another game. And, you know, this weekend we have another game, another opportunity. To, to put things right, to put um to put our best foot forward and um to you know show that we can, you know, but not just a performance but get results. And um like I said, um the weekend's another opportunity to do that. As somebody that's got a clear love for the club and a, a real affinity with its supporters as well, how do you go about doing that? How do you go about putting it behind you and looking forward? I mean on a personal level it's just about um kind of washing everything that's kind of happened and learning from it but you know kind of putting it to the side and and seeing these next few games as opportunities to to know prove you know myself ourselves um to to everyone that does support us everyone that does come you know takes the time to come and watch our games you know because it does mean a lot and you know on a like like i was saying on a personal level it's um it's just a bit of a, a little bit of pride you know a little bit of pride and um and like I said, uh, Saturday is a is a great opportunity to do that to um, in front of our in front of our fans, and I'm looking forward to it. You mentioned how much it hurts you, how much it hurts the fans, and you've also touched on the fact we're back at home on Saturday. It'd be good to give them something to shout about the weekend and just bits and pieces to shout about before the end of the season. Yeah, exactly. You know, you know they take the time out to kind of show up all the time, and like you said, I've had, I've had have great relationships with with a lot of people, and so it's um. You know, you want to give back. You want to give something for them, like you said, to shout on and shout about and and to root for. And um, yeah, every game is an opportunity to do that. So we have to take Saturday, you know, by the scruff of the neck, and you know, not let it just go past. It's very much a team game, and obviously results and performance as a collective are the important thing. But as a season, results aside, have you been happy with your own form this year? You know, it's hard to say. It's hard to say. So um, it's definitely been swings and roundabouts, and you know, I've always said that I've kind of I'm more focused on the, res the results. Um, you know, being in the team, I like I like to take the responsibility of every everything that's going. So you know, if we're if we're not winning, I can't really take much out of it other than the fact that we you know we've not won. But I, I always want to be in that position. I always want to be on the pitch to. Um, you know, win, lose or draw. I want to be on that pitch to put to put my best foot forward and to and I'll, I'll take the brunt of when when we do lose and and when we do eventually win, which I think we will. 
very, very soon. You know, when we do do that, I'm willing to be on the forefront of that as well. It's really admirable of you to kind of be modest about about your own kind of performances out on the pitch. But perhaps rather than answering that, do you look at Hakim Adolfi in the present day as kind of a better player than when he first arrived? Yeah, yeah. And, you know, grown as a person, as a player, you know, and... Um, and yeah, it's, it's been a process, you know, in this whole year. Um, I've played the most games I've played, you know, for the club in a season. So it's definitely, there's definitely something to take from that. Um, but yeah, this, these, these next nine games, I feel like it's a, it's a really, really important opportunity for us to, to show, like I was saying, that level of pride and to show, um, you know, that we're willing to not only fight for the badge, but put in good performances for the badge and, get results for the badge which I think is something that everyone can agree on, you know, in the changing room and everyone's on the, the same kind of page. Um, and so, yeah, we, we, we look at Saturdays um, as, you know, that beginning of us kind of taking this, this neck, this last little part of the season um, really, really, really seriously, regardless of anything that may come at the end of the season, taking these, these, these next few games as, as, you know, personal pride um, for the club. You mentioned how this season has probably helped you develop. It doesn't take any efforts, I think, back to that Middlesbrough goal and the euphoric scenes that followed it. Obviously, you want to get back to that feeling, but do seasons like this kind of help you learn a bit more about yourself and, and aid yourself as a player? Yeah, you, I feel like you learn about a lot about yourself in, in loads of different situations, you know. Obviously, I was here when we, when, we, when we came up and you learn a lot about yourself, you know, obviously not being in the team, but being around uh, uh, promotion um, winning team, you know, and then obviously staying up last season, you know, it's um, easy to football, you know, so I've kind of, I feel like I'm, I've kind of been in and around everything, you know, been in and around the club and this is just another, um, this, this whole season has just been another opportunity to learn and to grow from and to, like you're saying, you have to try and become better from it regardless of how it, how it is, but it's been, um, it's definitely been one to learn from and I feel like you can only kind of get better from the experiences you, you go through. You won't be looking too far into the future, such as the nature of games coming so thick and fast, but is uh, part of you already kind of looking forward to helping Rosie out on that roller coaster back to where you think it should be? Yeah, you know, it's like, and I feel like the immediate future is a great way to start, you know, and um, kind of putting that, putting our foot down on, on, on what we what we take pride in and, um, and a way to go about things and I feel like we've um, not done ourselves justice you know and done the probably done the fans justice in the last few games and I feel like these next few games is it's about like I was saying personal pride and pride for the whole club you know and I definitely get the sense that coming back um this 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 week of training has been has been that idea of you know having personal pride and and taking like I was saying this immediate um, few games and using that to kind of set a blueprint for what we want. Hakeem Adolphin has become renowned for last-ditch tackles, full body blocks, but you are among the top scorers as well. Are we, are we due another goal in the next few weeks? Yeah, I've been due on a while, I think. I think I've, um, there's been a few times where I, I, could, I could definitely be on more than I am now, which is funny to say. But um, yeah, yeah, it's definitely something that I, I, I do take pride in and I want to I wanna continue to be... Um, a goal threat and I think um, I definitely can be, you know, getting in, getting in the box corners and that kind of thing. Obviously, it's a little bit different playing at centre-back. It's more, probably more set pieces and that kind of thing. Um, but yeah, anyway, it does come, um, especially if it's helping the team to get results. Um, it's definitely something I do, yeah, take pride in.